Hi guys and welcome back to a new episode. Today we're going to be looking at an indicator called the TD sequential. The TD sequential is an indicator that is used to predict a revers reversal or correction within a trend by counting candles. The first count has 9 candles that fit the condition and the second count has 13. I'll explain what this means later, but to give you guys a quick understanding of it, think about it like this. The longer an investment goes up or down, the more likely it is to reverse. Therefore, the TD sequential builds off of this concept by creating a sort of a timer to let the user know when to expect a reversal. Alright, there's two parts of a TD sequential, the setup and the countdown. There's also a setup for when to buy and a setup for when to sell. The rules for the setup and the countdown remain the same regardless of whether you're looking to buy or sell. The rules are easy to understand, but it can get tedious to mark the candles manually, so I've included the code for creating this indicator in tradingview.com. Just copy and paste the code that I'm going to write down in the description. Copy and paste that, and then um, you just go, uh, go open up Pine Editor, Control V, and paste it in there. And then after you have that done, you can save it, and then after you save it, you click Add to Chart, and it should pop up. I already have it added so I'm just going to delete one of them since I have two. Oh man I messed that, I messed that up there we go or you can just add it from my trading view profile whatever is easier I'll start by going over the rules of how the setup works feel free to skip ahead if you're not interested in the logistics behind it alright so first comes the setup um, for the setup uh, you're going to always be looking for candles behind the current candle to determine if the setup can begin or continue. For an example, we're going to look at this image that I found online and then we'll look at some live examples. For the buy setup to begin, the candle you're looking at has to close below the candle that came four places behind it. In the current example, that would be candle A. As you can see here, this is the candle we're looking at, number one. One, two, three, four. That makes the candle A. Um, this rule is going to continue until candle 7 in the setup. So as you can see here, candle 1 closed way below candle A, candle 2 closed way below candle B, candle 3 closed below candle C, candle 4 closed below candle D, candle 5 closed below candle 1, and so on, all the way up to candle 7. Um, and then after we get to candle 7, we get to candle 8, which is basically determined in the same way, except for a few differences. Um, the main difference is that if the lowest shadow of candle 8 is lower than or equal to the lowest shadow of candle 6 or 7, then you can already start getting to, ready to buy a candle 8 rather than wait for candle 9. Um, why? Well, because theoretically this indicates that the current trend is closing steam, so it's near the end of its run. If candle 9 closed lower than candle 5, then the setup is complete, which is when you can start looking to sell or buy your position. The same rules apply to the selling setup, um, except in the opposite directions. We're still looking at where the candles are closing, but let me just zoom in one second. Uh, Alright. So we're still looking at where the candles closed, but um, this time they have to be they have to close higher than the candle that came four candles behind it. The eighth candle is the is where the trend is expected to start bouncing off of support or resistance. This is where the trend will face a small correction and a quick profit can be made. So as you can see here, candle eight or candle nine, they obviously found resistance here, which I bet if we look back. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a sort of a resistance right there, so it makes sense that it would stop there. But you can see the rules are still the same. Candle 1 had to close higher than candle A, which it did. Candle 2 closed higher than candle B, so on and so forth, up to candle 7. Candle 7 closed higher than candle uh, 3. You can see there, candle 8, same rules still apply. Candle 8 closed higher than candle 4, so the trend continues. After this setup comes um, the, the countdown. And the countdown is very is kind of similar. During the countdown, a candle is only counted if the current candle is, is either lower than two candles behind it if you're looking at a buying countdown, or higher than two candles behind it if you're looking at a selling countdown. Once the 13th candle is completed, again, you can expect a trend reversal and usually a bigger one than the one from the setup phase. So you can see here, right here, is where the setup was, the um, buying setup. 
After candle 9 was completed, then the setup finished and we're looking at the countdown phase. So as you can see here, we have to look two candles behind it. Candle 1 would be counted because um, the close of bar 1 is lower than the lows two bars earlier. So it closed here and you can see that it is in fact lower. So for example here, here we were looking at a buying setup, but now we're looking at a, at, um, a buying countdown. So this is going to let us know when to buy. So as you can see here, in order for it to buy, the rules for the setup were that it had the, the current candle had to close b below the, the previous candles. And in the countdown, it's basically the same thing too, except that instead of you looking four candles behind you, you're looking two. So candle one closed two candles um, below this one, so it would be below candle eight. You can see that it does fit the condition. Candle two closed below candle nine. Um, this one did not, but unlike the setup phase, the countdown does not have to be consecutive. You can skip bars until the 13 count is completed. So you can see here, 13. I mean, candle three fits the condition. Candle four, candle five, candle six, candle seven, all the way up to candle 13. After candle 13 is when the countdown ends and when you can buy. And as you can see here, the um, the reversal from the countdown was a lot bigger than the reversal that happened or I mean the correction that happened after the setup phase and then again the rules still apply no matter whether it's a buying countdown or a selling countdown as you can see here the same rules still apply there's a set first comes the setup a 9 count and then comes the countdown a 13 count except as again as you can see here instead of four candles we're looking only behind only two and in this case the candle has to close higher than the candle that came two candles um, behind it so candle one closed higher than candle um, eight candle two closed higher than candle nine these didn't fit the conditions so we skip them and move on to candle three all the way up until we have 13 candles and then you can see here that in fact a big correction came afterwards or a reversal. This, this probably looks more like a reversal. And now let's move on to some live examples.